Okay, so we have reviewed this watercolor book um, this month in my creative year. I am really liking this and I'm really using it as sort of a watercolor encyclopedia. It has, and I'm showing you here, a lot of stuff on masking fluid, which I just feel like I don't know how to use very well. I have a few different kinds. I find them challenging. So here I'm putting some masking fluid. This one happens to be blue. I think it might be Schminka, I don't remember, on some plain white watercolor paper, or maybe it's Molotow. It might be, I don't know, it doesn't matter. There's lots of brands. If you have some, use it. I have it, I should be using it. I'm sprinkling it here and then I need to let it dry. Um, you can see here some of the big large dots are gone. I rubbed them off <laughs> because they were too big because um, you can do that. The masking fluid will preserve the white paper underneath. So I'm going over it really quickly with a very light bluish gray mixture and then I'm gonna dry that. Um, the whole idea of masking fluid is that pre it preserves the paper and or color underneath it while you're painting. And I want to learn more effectively how to do that. And this little book that I reviewed seems to have loads of information about masking fluid. So I'm hoping it helps. I think it will. So now I'm trying just a different way of sprinkling the masking fluid on the page. It's dry. I'm putting a little bit of the masking fluid on my mixing plate here and using an old eyebrow brush and a card to just kind of flick it on the page. And it works actually fairly well and gives me sort of littler drops instead of big giant ones. So then I need to wipe that off my plate. I need to get it dry and then I'm going over it with another layer of paint this time in the shape of little pine trees and then drying that and then adding more masking fluid. And I think you probably get the idea. I'm going um, over each layer of paint with more masking fluid. I'm creating this sort of snowy, bluish, whitish Christmas tree thing. Um, each successive layer of trees is darker than the first. And um, hopefully I get something that looks halfway decent. Although honestly, I'm not trying for a perfect painting. Um, what I'm trying for is um, something that I'm learning about how to use masking fluid while doing. Um, and having it be a perfect, great painting while doing that, well, those things don't always go together. And I have to say, this isn't the best painting I have ever created, but I did learn a lot while making it, and that was the point. So now I'm making my bluish color a little darker, a little bluer. Um, this is my Daniel Smith, Smith palette, so I'm using my ultramarine blue. I'm using kyanite. I'm using Payne's gray. Um, and I'm mixing them together to just see what happens and get, get sh different shades of bluish gray colors for my trees. I'm just using a plain flat brush and uh, yeah, putting the color on in a tree shape. There you go. Adding some sort of snowy ground shadows at the bottom. Trying to have each tree be in a slightly different place than the one before it and each layer of trees being darker than the one before them. Drying them with my heat tool completely and having the paint very, very dry before I put any more masking fluid. I also have this masking fluid pen. I'm not so sure I like it to be honest, but I experiment with using it on one of the layers and just creating dots semi-successfully. I'm not sure I like the pen. I think if I'm gonna use masking fluid, I like the loose masking fluid and not anything in a pen. But that could be just be me. Because, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, this book has um, a lot of information about um, using masking fluid and successful ways to do that. And loads of other watercolor techniques, tools, and supplies. I can't say enough about this book. It really is sort of like a watercolor encyclopedia. Uh, for those of you who missed it, it is called Watercolor Painting, Expert Answers to the Questions Everyone Artist Asks by George James. I believe I picked it up at Tuesday morning for $5. So here's another layer of darker trees. And I believe I'm just about done. I um, 
maybe have one more layer in me. Again, I'm just doing this quickly. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm not really trying to have a per perfect painting. I am learning a lot about what I do and don't like in ma uh, with masking fluid. There are a few instances, if you watch carefully, where my watercolor paint wasn't as dry as I thought it was. And when I hit that layer with the masking fluid, the masking fluid started to go in places that I didn't want it to. So I had to quickly wipe it off and dry it so I could rub the rest of it off without leaving a residue. Um, you do want to be really, really careful that things are dry. You also want to be careful when using a heat tool with masking fluid because it tends to not always react really well and it could bubble up and do some weird textury things that aren't necessarily what you want. I'm looking for my masking fluid eraser or my rubber cement eraser. You can rub masking fluid off with your finger, but this rubber cement eraser is really the easy way to get it off. And you can see here that it did work and I have these bright white dots over, um, you know, where over in my trees, it looks like there's snow falling and that was the idea. So with all those layers of trees, it did preserve the white paper in the background. I'm going to highlight my piece with some pencil, um, some white gel pen. Uh, I am here grabbing some pencils <laughs> off camera and I left the camera on and yeah. So you get a fun picture of my dirty water. <laughs> there we go. So I just went and quickly grabbed some blue colored pencils, different ones. They're probably Derwent and uh, some of them may be water soluble, but I don't think they all are. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to get them wet. And I'm just highlighting the shapes of the different trees with the different colors of colored pencil in um, successively, successively darker shades, just like with a watercolor paint. I'm being intentionally sort of messy and random with it. I'm not wanting it to be perfect by any stretch. Now for some white gel pen highlights to do some more suggesting of snow. You will find here at the end that I do actually show a still image here for a few seconds at the end if you stay tuned and watch where I've added some glitter glue um, to the painting. I think it just gives it a cute um, little touch, mixed media touch or greeting card-ish touch. Anyway, I want you to think about um, finding a book like this at your library that has techniques in it maybe that you're not great with and experimenting and playing um, using tools and supplies you already have and you don't have to buy the book. Go check it out at your library and see if they have it there. That's it for today. Check out the description below for relevant links and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.